Well, joining me now is uh, former Victorian Liberal Party President Michael Kroger and Sky News contributor Tina McQueen. Uh, Michael, I'll start with you over in Victoria. You've got sure. a new Premier. What do you think of Jacinta Allen? Well, we got a new Premier. It wasn't without a bit of a bloodbath. Um, yeah, indeed. Because... Uh, you know, behind the scenes, what was happening, Daniel Andrews was trying to get her in as Premier and another member of the social left faction, Tim Pallas, in as deputy. And the right said, no way. Well, that's power share. Uh, the left said, no. Andrews and his people said, no, you're going to have both of them. And the right said, OK, well, we'll put up uh, our man, which they did. And uh, he nominated. And in the end, the left said, well, OK, maybe we should power share after all. Mm. So that's what happened. Uh, look, she's very much in the Daniel Andrews mould. Obviously, we wish we wish her well. We congratulate her on, on winning. It's a great thing becoming Premier of a state. But she's very close to Daniel Andrews, has been for a long time. And I think she'll be very much be very much in his mould. Mm. So is that a good thing for Victoria? Probably not, mate, unfortunately. No, but I think it's good to see that the, the right has at least gained some ground she, back today she, because she, because no, without yeah. that, Tina, um, you know, you, you would have had a continuation of leader from the socialist yeah. left, deputy from the socialist yeah. left, uh, treasurer from the socialist yeah. left. Like, it would have just been, you know, uh, uh, Daniel Andrews with a wig on. Look, she's no Daniel Andrews, though. Whatever you say about his policies and how dreadful he was, <laughs> oh, the guy was a genius, you know. Oh, yeah. So, Michael, One of we, the best politicians I think this country's ever seen. I agree, Caleb, 100%. So, the Liberal Party has a big shock if they can get their act together in Victoria. I don't know about the current leader. I don't know if he's uh, got the melter to, to do it. Michael <laughs> will know more about that. But, you know, to get rid of Daniel, Daniel Andrews is a big thing. Yes. So let's see how that goes. See how things develop. Well, uh, Noel Pearson, of course, took to the National Press Club today to fiercely defend his failing Yes campaign, calling it the last best hope for reconciliation. Take a look at a bit of what he said. Voting yes is a rejection of confected war. Voting no is not a neutral choice. Voting no is an active choice to take us nowhere. I mean, Michael, um, Noel Pearson, to his credit, is a great orator, but um, mm. voting no is an active choice to take us nowhere. Wasn't he the one saying just a couple of weeks ago that we've got to bring the no voters with us, not tell mm. them that they're wrong? Well, it's a statement of love, we're being told. This is a great offer from Noel <laughs> Pearson and Marcy Langdon. It's a, it's an offer in love, unless you're a racist, of course, voting no. So then it's not an <laughs> offer of love. Um, look, look, you know, Noel is a great intellect. He's a great orator. Um, he's worked as a leader of the community for 20-odd years. And now, after 20-odd years, he and Marcy Langton and Megan Davis and others, Caleb, tell us that everything they've told us in the past is wrong. We need a completely new broom, which is this voice. And the one thing that the Yes campaign have absolutely failed to do during this whole campaign is explain why the voice would be different to the NIAA, which is already a national Indigenous agency in Canberra with dozens of staff, hundreds of staffers and billions of dollars in a budget which advises government. They can't explain why it's different to closing the gap, which is a multi-billion dollar agreement between 55, the 55 peak Aboriginal organisations and the, all the governments and the local government association, all giving advice to government already on mm. government policy and programs. Mm. How is the voice... Why are these organisations failing so badly that we need 24 unelected people to fix everything? And so, mm. to me, it's been an absolute insult to the intellect of Australians, average Australians, not to be able to say, well, here's why it's different. Rather than these one-page ads, you know, expressing love, have one-page ads saying, right, this is why the NIAA doesn't work. This is why closing the gap has failed. This is why the money given to the Cape York Peninsula, for example, doesn't work. And explain to people why the voice will overcome all of these problems. Now, the reason they don't do that is because the voice will not overcome any of these problems at all. <laughs> And, and that's why they can't do it. And, of course, um, we learned earlier in the week that Noel Pearson, not all that long ago, was saying, well, we should have all the detail put on the table before we, we go out to, uh, to mm. tender, also, as it were, yeah, on he, Also, he didn't start out with a whole lot of love <clears throat> in the initial Yes campaign. No. No, Alan, there was very little remember? love. Very but, little love. Uh, we were having a discussion on Sunday night because we were both in here because we've got nothing better to do. We haven't got yeah. lives. And, um, <laughs> and and you said to me, don't be so cocksure about the, the vote going down 
you you don't believe the polling is 100%? Look, I, I, I do think and I'm hopeful the no vote will get up. I'm just very cautious that we don't overshoot this. You know, I want everyone to be very conscious this is a very big decision and don't think just because we're ahead in the polls that everything's going to be fine. People become, you know, don't become complacent. I want everyone to be stay firm on this right to the end. Pay attention, stand by your no, stick with your friends. If your friends are voting yes, try and convince them right up to the very death. That's how important it is for the country, Caleb. Now, That's why I'm cautious. 